Good morning, everyone. I'm here with Emma Checker, who's a Melbourne City player. Um, our Australian viewers will absolutely know who she is. And we're going to get to know 11 things that you might not know about it. <laughs> How do you feel, Emma? Well, it's a good start to the day, isn't it? We're here chatting, sun shining, so I'm feeling good. Awesome. That's the way to go. All right, question one. What's the best part about being a professional athlete? Um, for me, there's, I mean, there's so many good things about it, but I guess especially being in a team sport and in the world game, the best thing about being a professional in this sport is the fact that I've had so much global experience and I've seen so many incredible parts of the world. And I think, you know, in that I've met so many amazing people and my network goes far greater than being just local to Australia. So that's something that's been really amazing for me. No, that's awesome to hear that. And I think, um, as you mentioned, just that global reach, but also just getting to meet people from all sides of the different world and hearing their stories. I mean, that's 90% of what we do. That must be insane. Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, you know, I've played in a number of different countries now and lived in a number of different countries. So your network just grows and grows and it also makes you realise how small the world actually is. Absolutely, 100% there. I was going to ask you, what's your favourite country? But I feel like that's an unfair question to ask. Oh... I would have to say Iceland. In, okay. Yeah. Beautiful e country. Other than Australia, obviously. <laughs> oh, beautiful country. I've seen photos of athletes go there. The landscape looks absolutely amazing. The people I've heard are absolutely genuine out there. Oh, it was – I had the most incredible time. I was there last year for, what was it, almost eight months, and it was the most beautiful country I've, I've ever been to. That's awesome to hear that. Right, question two, three songs that you can sing on the top of the head – on top of your head – I am awful at singing, so I would, <laughs> I would say that I can speak the, the lyrics rather than sing, <laughs> but I'm trying to think, there's, uh, we have a lot of Kanye West in the change room, so I would say that it would, it would probably be some of his music. Good old Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know what specific three songs it would be. I mean, Homecoming, Black Skinhead, any of those, I would say that the lyrics would flow, but um, I'll go with those. Okay, we won't make you sing it, like because I feel like <laughs> if you have to sing it, I have to sing it, and I don't want to sing it. So I think we'll just agree that we we both don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of games, any pre or post game rituals that you have? I used to have a lot more than I do now. Um, I would say that I was probably too superstitious, to be honest, um, in a way that I, I drove myself mad when I was younger. So now, I don't really have a lot of things that I stick to doing religiously, but I, without realising, will subconsciously always put my left shin pad and my left sock and my left boot on before my right. So I guess that is, it's not a, you know, um, it's more of a superstition than anything but rather than a ritual. But, yeah, I tend to eat similar things leading into a game and I'm conscious of having, you know, the same sleep habits and little things like that, but nothing, nothing too strict. No, that's great to hear that. And speaking of those early superstition, is there anything you want to that you can share from the early days? Yeah, I, I mean, I have a, a good example that will sound like it's, you know, we can laugh about it now because it's so long ago, but the, it, it sounds grim because it was the day I did my ACL, but it was, we can honestly have a laugh about it, it's okay. I had three things that I that went wrong on that day oh, that in my mind were a sign that things weren't going well. Yeah, and it was from that day on, I just knew I, I couldn't have strict superstitions that weren't in my control. So yeah. now I, you know, it's, I'm much more lighthearted about all of those things. Yeah. That's great to hear. It's great to hear that you sort of took those life lessons and just evolved with it. Yeah, well, we can't, we can't control everything, even though I would love to. Terrific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and... What does Emma Checker do when she's not in or around a football pitch? I mean, I think that'd be like 90% of your time. Um, drink a lot of coffee. Okay. <laughs> it is Melbourne. No, yes. but more, yeah, I, I study. So um, at the moment I'm studying three subjects. So I normally, it, depending on the season that I'm in, where I am, um, I, I'm always studying at least one subject, sometimes three like now. Yeah. And my goal for this year was to finish my degree. So um, thankfully I'm on track to doing that and that definitely takes up a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. And right now um, is a little bit different to what I'm used to because normally I'm always in season and I am juggling 
you know, high intensity training environment. But because I am rehabbing at the moment, Mm -hmm. a lot of my time has been spent, I've been coaching, I've been doing work um, in a school and doing a lot of private coaching. So that's kind of been my balance. And um, yeah, so it's been a little bit different to what I'm used to. That's awesome to hear. And it's fantastic to hear that you're sort of branching out um, beyond football, but also still engaging in the sport, you know, through coaching, through your studies and things like that. Yeah, I mean, it's made me realise that while, you know, normally even when I have been injured, it's been while I'm still in a team environment. So it's the first time for a while that I've been rehabbing in an off-season. So I guess the coaching, even though I don't see my career in coaching, it's given me an opportunity to experience game day through a different lens. And it's it's funny because now I feel like I'm on the pitch. <laughs> It does feel like that, especially at training when you're having, you kind of forget that you're coaching kids and you just start to like take plays on for fun. Oh yeah. And on the weekend I was versing Bubs' team. So it was, it was, a, it was a battle. I'm on the sideline, not only with a really good friend, but yes. my teammate. So it was, yeah, it's, it's still giving me that same competitive edge. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome to hear that. And um, just wanted to touch on just you on your rehab, how that's going so far and just touch on the coaching side of things. Yeah, my rehab was, it's been slow, um, well, slower than expected and I would have liked, but at the same time, it's partly been intentional because it's been the first time I've actually had the opportunity to rehab without, you know, strict deadlines and time frames. So I decided that it, it was a good opportunity for my body to reset um, and also for me to mentally reset. So I've been ticking over um, well and I'm, I'm still on track to being back by when I was hoping to be back, which is mid-year. Um, but, yeah, I've just taken my time and it's it's been what my body needs. Oh, that's fantastic, yeah, and it's awesome to hear that your rehab's going fantastic. So you start to run again, which is brilliant to see, and then hopefully you'll smash that goal out by the mid-season and be back. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> what are your three favourite dishes to eat? Uh, so what's your favourite dish, either to cook or to get away uh, from takeout? Oh, I love cooking and I love food. So answering this is really hard because I feel like I have so many things that I love cooking and eating. Um, If I'm, let's go with your top three. Let's go with your top three. Okay, I was going to say I can give you a split answer. If I go out to eat, um, if it's brunch, I love a good acai bowl. Um, And if it's um, dinner. Then I have well, I have one restaurant that I basically only go to on repeat, and it's it's almost like an Asian fusion inspired. Awesome. But um, I am vegan, so it has to cater to that. Yes. Are you also? Yeah. Oh hell yeah! Yeah. Love that. Oh, I'm stoked. So my favorite and cooking at home. What do I honestly like a Buddha bowl? Just anything colorful, heaps of veggies. It just if you if you give me a bowl of color, I'm set. (laughs) That's the way to go. Just chuck as much. The vegetables in there as yeah. possible and just go for it. Colour, flavour, nailed it. Can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to move on. Otherwise, I'll feel here. We'll be here all day. <laughs> if you weren't in football or if you didn't become a professional footballer, what path do you think you might have taken or was a possibility? I always said as a kid that I wanted to be a police officer. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing if I hadn't have taken the path of being an athlete, that would have been on the cards. Mm-hmm. Um I, I did my personal training certificates or my certificates in fitness when I was younger as well. So I, I had a really, I enjoyed my connection to fitness in that way. But in terms of a career path, I would say that I'd be a cop. I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that. <laughs> Is that a good thing? It's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. I can definitely see those leadership qualities that you display on the football field and that discipline taking it into an environment. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's a team in a different way. It's a challenge in a different way. So I think it still would have very different to sport, but still involves the same kind of skills. How do you deal with like being a pro athlete and a student? Um, I mean, my student life has probably been a bit different to most because I've, I've never, ever been on campus once. Um, I study purely online and I always have. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really fortunate that my university offers a really great, um, they call it the cloud campus and so for me I, I've never had that it's it, it was a hard transition because I'd never obviously in school you're face to face every day it's yeah. everything's personal and so going to an online platform challenged me because I lost that you know personal interaction but um, it's been the best thing I ever did I, I love the balance of studying it's you know it's a it shifts my mind into something completely different to football and I think for me that's that's the balance I need and I you know 
probably a bit of a nerd. I actually enjoy I actually enjoy my degree and I enjoy studying. So um, for me, it doesn't feel like a chore when I come home from training and then have to get into it. I actually I like that transition and shift. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it is funny when I have group assignments and often the platform that people use is social media to talk and I will often try and divert that into a Teams chat rather than social media because otherwise the conversations definitely shift from uni. <laughs> oh, I can imagine that but I was going to say it's kind of a it's a heavy discipline being able to study online I don't think there's it's a very select group of people that can do that and it looks like you're one of those people and then you're thriving in that environment. Yeah, I mean, the good thing about it is I would say there's way less distractions. Um, I don't think I get distracted easily, but it is nice that I can just come home and, you know, lock myself in a room and just get it done um, rather than having to go and be on campus. But, you know, there are definitely times, especially in group assignments, where it is really hard and I have lived all over the world, obviously, while I'm studying. So, Time, time zone differences for exams and assignments have, have definitely tested me, but I think that it's also been a really good skill for me to learn is, you know, being organised enough to manage that. No, I completely agree there. And like I was saying before, that discipline is amazing to see. Yeah, thank yeah, you. I, I'd only last, like, I've done online studying and I've only lasted 20 minutes before. <laughs> There's like 600 tabs open. <laughs> oh, it's chaos, <laughs> the tabs. Who did Emma Checker look up to growing up and who did she want to be? In a football sense, um, I mean, obviously, when I was younger, unfortunately, we didn't actually have a lot of female role models. Um, So, I mean, within Australia, though, I did still, I really looked up to Cheryl Salisbury. Um, You know, she was a a big player of my time when I was a kid growing up. So she was an idol in that regard. And obviously, Marta on a more global scale, Um, probably every person in my generation, female in my generation would say that. Um, But yeah, I think that, I mean, it's a bit off topic, but that is a nice shift that we are now in a place where young girls have so many options as role models. And I think, you know, when I'm not that old, but even when I was younger, it was very limited and we weren't exposed to having many options as role models. But yeah, for me, it was um, Cheryl Salisbury. That's awesome to you. And it's great to see, as you mentioned, that we're getting so many positive female role models like yourself and your teammates who young players can look up to. Yeah, I mean, young young players have a really clear pathway now and it's they're exposed to, you know, they, they can engage with elite players and it's much more accessible, whereas it, it just wasn't really a thing to, even 10 years ago. No, 100% agree. And, like, I was telling some of my girls that I coach um, at school soccer, I'm like, hey, I'm interviewing Emma Check, like, oh, I know her. <laughs> That's the best. Oh, yeah. I love that. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, going into, like, a big game or, like, a big weekend that you've done a number of times in your career, how do you calm yourself down? Honestly, I think it, it just comes with experience. Um For me, I I feel like the last few years, I've definitely, I've felt and noticed a shift. I I used to be really tense, really uptight. Um, I have a pretty serious personality. So on game day, I, it was like I set an expectation of myself that, you know, I wouldn't have fun. I wouldn't laugh. It was all, all switched on. I'd listen to exactly the same songs every game. And I I set myself these really unrealistic expectations and if I was laughing or having fun, I would tell myself I wasn't switched on enough for the game. And so I think over the last few years, I would say I've just naturally really relaxed because I I know that I'm ready and when you're younger, you you know, there's all this doubt and, you know, what if I did this better or that better, whereas now I I know that I'm doing everything I can. And I know that however I play is the best I can do on that given day. And if something does go wrong, I, I won't blame my preparation because I've I've done everything I can right. And it doesn't mean that it always works. It doesn't mean I'm always going to have the best game of my life. But I feel like I'm at peace with knowing that I'm ready for that game. No, I can completely relate to that. I think I've went on a similar journey, be it COVID or just being life experience, as you mentioned. But um, as you're saying, yeah, it's just sort of chilling. Yeah, if that's the right word. Not sounding rude, but um, just sort of relaxing and just getting used to it. Going, hey, it's football. End of the day, you know, you win games, you lose games, that kind of nature. Yeah, and I mean, it's what we train for every day. You know, we're ready for those moments, and I still get nervous. It's not that I'm not nervous. It do- wouldn't matter what level game I was playing. I'm nervous because I want to win. Exactly. And it's not. So it doesn't mean that there's not nerves, but it's not. Um, you know, I'm not overworked up by it. No, hundred percent agree there. And the last thing I'll mention on that is that I think it's the confidence. 
I don't know if you feel like, like you, you have more confidence just getting with the experience that you back yourself. Yeah, it's just, it's self-belief. And I think that's something that can actually only come with time. Three words um, that your partner, your family, your friends would describe you as. Oh, serious, probably, unfortunately. <laughs> um, competitive and thoughtful. Awesome. awesome. All great words. That's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> I mean, we can go downstairs and check what, if she agrees. But <laughs> That's right. She can let us know in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> and last question before we wrap up. What's the best sort of advice that you've received or sort of the best advice that you have for like anyone out there? Oh, honestly, is just to enjoy the present moment. And I, I know that it sounds cliche and I used to think it was cliche when people said it to me, but you know, through the highs and the lows, and I, I feel like I've had some extreme highs and also some extreme lows, but I think just actually embracing whatever the present brings, and I think that's something I've also become better at with age and experience is just sitting in the moment. And I guess for me, especially right now, like I, you know, we're playing in finals and I was, you know, set to go overseas on a contract and um, then getting injured right when all of that is happening it it's it can feel a lot but it, when you just sit back and sit in it and you know appreciate that it's it is still all part of a bigger picture um it makes it all a lot more bearable and i think i'm i'm now better at seeing not the light at the end but also the good parts that can come from even the lows so i think for me even though i'm injured i'm i'm now i've got the opportunity to reset and you know i've been able to grind through a little bit more of my degree and just you you can kind of do other things in that space so I think and then once I am back obviously you're back on a high so I think for me it's just being told and being and learning to understand that it is really important to sit in the present moment and just enjoy it like it's if you're not having fun why are you doing it I feel like those are like the words out of my last six months right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you're not enjoying what you're doing then you're doing the wrong thing 100% agree but like you were saying like just being in that present moment I just lost my words because, like, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the journey I've been on. But, no, like, I completely agree 100% there. And I think that is an absolute great advice to anyone. It doesn't matter what you're doing or what field you're in. You're just going to enjoy the moment. Yeah, and also just it's okay if it's not okay. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's another thing I've had to learn to be okay with is that when you are on the lows, like, no one, no one expects you to be okay all the time. Yeah. And I think being at peace with that is also okay. I I own it. Like, if, you, if you're having a bad day or a bad week, month, whatever, like, it's – that is life and it is okay to feel that way. <laughs> Once again, 100% agree with that and back that statement. Well, look, thank you for joining us and having a chat about yourself. Hopefully our viewers got to know a little bit more about Emma Checker that they didn't know. And then, yeah, all the best with your recovery and can't wait to see you back on the park. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. All good.